You're welcome back. This is the Upside Down Show on City TV, and today we are doing something really, really interesting. Such a beautiful conversation to be had. Yeah, indeed. Uh, people have a talent, but then they back the talent with some passion. You might think, well, it's a hobby. He's doing it at his or her leisure. But it's paying off, and it's beautiful when you know, you're having you know, fun and then <laughs> smiling to the bank as well. It, you know? No, I'm going to ask this gentleman how he does it because yeah. I love to move around, mm -hmm. you know. But beyond just taking yeah. photos, I, I don't know how to make money out of mm -hmm. it. But I think that that is why we all have mm. people we can look up to yeah. and can ask questions. Maybe he's going to be my mentor. Well, you know, he's doing this. it, and he's and doing it know. amazingly of well. Course. I mean, I sit in this country, and then through his eyes, I have traveled other countries. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? And yeah, he's really doing a lot, yeah. you know. And sometimes when you get to know that the government can even use some of his videos, yeah, true, you know, to do. True. I mean, their, their own advocacy and, like and research and all that. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> our very own mm. a Ghanaian-born YouTuber making Ghana so proud. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, please help us welcome Wode Maya. Wode Maya. <laughs> Wow. 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 That was a beautiful intro. Yeah, yeah. I mean. <laughs> no, but, but honestly, you have to take me through mm -hmm. some tutorials because I think I should be making money. Oh, really? From, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, of course. S see me after this show. I will. I will. I will. Welcome to the show. Thank you so okay, much. Nice meeting you. Mm, nice yeah, meeting yeah. you. Yeah. Is Wodemaya your name? Wodemaya is not my real name. What is your name? My name is Kobina Akun. Oh, you're oh. I'm also a two Oh, I'm retired, you. I see. That's how I'm not recording. I'm not recording. So tell us about mm. you, you know, Kwabna, before mm -hmm. you became Wodemaya. Kwabna was born in a village in Takradi um, mm. called Ahinko Fikrom. Mm. I grew up in the village. Um, mm. I attended Westridge um, Junior High School. And then from there, I went to Bompe Senior High School. And uh, it came to a time that I have to travel to China. Okay. And then I went to China and what am I? So what, mm. so what, what does mean? it mean? Yeah, what, what does Wadamaya mean? <laughs> <laughs> Wadamaya literally means my mom in Chinese, right? Mm -hmm. ah. So, I mean, when I started my whole YouTube career, I'm actually a first class aeronautical engineer. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so when I started that whole education, my mom, my dad was like, you can't mm. be a YouTuber and an engineer at the same time. Mm -hmm. You just have to focus on your, you know, African parents, they exactly. want to see you yeah. a being an engineer. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. But my mom was always behind the scene telling me that, you know what? keep it low but I mean keep doing it mm -hmm. but on a low key yeah. because your dad is extremely mad at you mm -hmm. so when my mom started supporting me and then I decided that you know what let me change this whole YouTube name from Ghana baby oh you're Ghana baby oh, okay yeah. wow. so that's how I started Ghana exactly baby. so that's why right. I still have Mr. Ghana baby uh -huh. on my Instagram so yeah. I just change everything just to celebrate my mom so mm, every milestone awesome. on my channel we do something for my mom awesome. Wow. Awesome. Wow. awesome so do you speak Mandarin of course very well Ah, wow. Who is your man? What does that mean? Kuda. I'm Kuda. asking if you can speak Chinese too. No, no, how did you say it? No, who is sure? Ne hui shoma. How do I say yes? Charlie, this is your sure show you are doing on this TV. Be careful. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. No, so, so you're going to China, you know, yeah. and now being a great YouTuber, do they have yeah. any connection? Yeah, I think um, I learned everything that I know in China. Okay. China really played a great uh, role in my life because I, I didn't know anything. You know, my first time of even coming to Accra was when I was applying for my visa. Okay. Hmm. From straight to Takradi to Accra, then straight to China. And which year was wow. this? This was 2012. Hmm. Okay. And let me tell you something. When I even arrived in Dubai, they looked at me and they said, where is your mom and dad? Ah. <laughs> they, 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 even, they, they even detained me for hours. I was the last person to, you know, wow. exactly. So that's where the name is Ghana Baby came hmm. about. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I went to China and um, I was exposed to 24-7 internet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was doing research about how can I study and at the same time do something mm. else on the internet? Okay. Right. You understand? So that is when I started consuming a lot of YouTube content mm. and I found out that, oh wow, you can actually do this and end from it. Mm. So, I mean, I started everything mm. on campus just having fun. So I started my YouTube career in university. And that's when my dad got to know one of my videos and he mm. got a shout yeah. out. Yeah. 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 How do you create the content? And when you start off, are you certain that, okay, this is going to be eye catching? 
you know, um, I started YouTube as a hobby mm. because I had a passion for being in front of the camera. I'm a very talkative guy, so mm. oh, I just felt like <laughs> I cannot be talking for free. Mm -hmm. You need to pay me for talking. Right. You understand? And that is when YouTube came in. Mm. So I started creating everything just for fun on campus. I mean, I started videos with Chinese women. Mm. So my dad was literally mad. So what were you discussing with a Chinese woman? Just, I mean, flirting <laughs> with women. That's it. As oh, a young Lord. black guy living in China. So uh -huh. that's how I started. Did and they then, fancy you? Exactly. A, a black man who speaks Chinese definitely have yeah. upper hand. Oh, wow. Exactly. Because yeah. I learned to speak Chinese in three months. So wow. I have also, to, yeah. also, how you, Because I, I, I understand yeah. Chinese is a very difficult language um, to learn. It, it's a very difficult language, but, you know, I, I went to China with no school fees. So... Mm. Within that three months of not going to school, mm. I had people, because I was like a baby, so the people that <laughs> clean our hostel, they mm -hmm. loved me. You know, they were like, why are you in the room? You're not going to school. So all the time they come to talk to me, and that is when I was okay. able to communicate with them, consume YouTube video on how to say this, and I come and tell them. Ah. And within three months, I was able to speak the uh, street wow. Chinese until I even started my wow. class. Wow. So wow. that is how Impressive, everything huh? Exactly. Let, let's just go back to the content and then how yeah. it started exactly. with the Chinese women. So um, it started with Chinese women. Mm -hmm. And uh, when my dad got mad, he was like, you know what? You speak Chinese. Why don't you use your Chinese in a positive way? Mm -hmm. Instead of always with women, because, you know, I'm not going to allow my son to be doing exactly. this kind of thing. So it, it came with a concept of being a black man, mm -hmm. changing, um, clearing misconception about Africans living in China. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that, v my first video blew up. Mm. This like, was when? This was in 2014. 14, okay. Because okay. I, I was doing YouTube for two years. No mm -hmm. one was watching me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like being a comedian, no one was yeah. watching. Uh -huh. Until I spoke to my dad. That um, mm -hmm. concept came in by changing the um, misconception about Africans living right. in China. And that's it. People could relate to what I do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I became uh, mm -hmm. a successful YouTuber mm -hmm. in Africa, in, in China. Mm -hmm. And when I became that, I felt like, you know what, China is not my home. Everybody wanted to come to China because of my videos. Yeah. Any African who visited China mm. those days, they came because of me. And I'm like, if I can do this in China, I can actually do it better in Africa. In Africa. Yeah. And that's why I set up a project called Africa to the World. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that is when I came to Africa. Mm. And it's the best thing I've ever done. Mm. Wow. Awesome. But how, how easy was it, you know, coming back home and um, now making this mm. a project that you're working on? How was the reception like? Uh, reception like, I think in Ghana, and they never accepted me from the beginning because mm -hmm. I did everything in Ghana before. Uh, but they felt like, yo, who is this guy? So, what gave you the breakthrough? The breakthrough was from um, what do you call Rwanda when I sat in the gutter yes, mm -hmm. yes, eating, yes, yes. and yeah. the video went viral. And that is when, you know, like even coming to Africa, I was on a loan. Okay. Yeah, it was. Okay. Uh, you had to borrow money. I had to borrow because I, I, I wanted to go because I've already done the research and I know that Africa is the place. Mm. Yeah. But I didn't have that amount of money. Mm. I asked right. my friends, they were like, okay, we can't support you. We don't support trips like this. So I spoke to my Chinese friend and then he used his credit card to get me a ticket in five countries. Mm. And when I go to Ghana, no one was watching. I'm like, you know what? Straight to Ethiopia. Then Rwanda, I sat in the gutter and everything changed. Yeah. And I told my friend that, hey, you know what? We're paying the loan. Please. Tell me our approach to business, you know, the African and the Chinese. Africans always want to see you successful before they get close to you. Mm. But a Chinese person sees the future and he wants to invest yeah. in you. And that's our problem. My, my friends never supported me. They were like, yo, we don't support trips like this. You're going to <laughs> Africa to chill with women. You're telling us to give you a dollar. I never even asked for anything. I asked for one dollar. You know, because I had the money, but the money was too much. So I was asking people for like, you know, a dollar to support. Awesome. Awesome. That Rwanda one, that blew up. I mean, <laughs> right through your thought process, what yeah. came into your head for you to go sit in the gutter? I mean, I, I feel like um, sometimes I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, I don't do research in every country that I go to. Mm. I just go there. First impression, I create content out of it. Right. So I went to Rwanda. I mean, visiting an African country for the first time and I'm seeing, wow. This country is so clean. Yeah. yeah. Then I went to buy food. I was eating and I saw a guy cleaning mm. a gutter. But a gutter is not that dirty. Yeah, yeah, why are you are cleaning? cleaning? Then I went to him. I left my food there and I went to him and I asked him, why are you cleaning the gutter? He said, that's my job. I clean the gutter five times a day. Whether it's wow. dirty or not. Whether it's dirty or not. Five times a day. Wow. And when he told me that, I quickly went back to the restaurant, pick up my food, come and sit in the gutter just mm -hmm. to tell people that it's a cleaner. People were looking at me, is this guy going mad? But yeah. <laughs> in my mind, I was just creating culture. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that video changed my life. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And subsequently, how yeah. has the journey been? It's been fantastically well. 
I think um, currently it sits on um, 861,000. Um, almost a million, um, number one in Ghana. Yes. Mm. It's been amazing. I don't know how, because no one was tapping into this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, when I came, I saw a lot of content Everybody creators. Has YouTube. Exactly. Yeah. But my concept is totally different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not, even um, recently, YouTube is giving fans for content creators. Mm -hmm. Ghana was exempted. Mm. You know why? Because most of our content, I reach out to them and they're like, most of our content are in tree. You know, okay. so okay. now we're trying to bring that thing back again. That there are a lot of content creators that are coming up that mm. are using English to create content in Ghana. So I think very soon, I think we will also um, qualify for the funds. Mm. You know? mm. So what makes one a great YouTuber? Personality. Mm. But not the content? Not a, you see, it's not always about the content. Okay. You always have to put yourself in your videos. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always tell people that, I'm a village boy from Ghana. Okay. When I started, Ghanaians told that, oh, you are not elegant. Why are you wearing shorts? Why are you doing this and that? But no, I wanted to be me. Yeah. And use my own way to tell the story. And yeah. people could relate to me. Yeah. yeah. Like, I can even wear singlets and shoot a video, and no one cares because they know that that is who I am. Mm. Yeah. So staying authentic, adding your personality to it, and then look for any kind of content that you want to create and you're good to go. Because I even believe that each and everyone out there needs to have a YouTube channel. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, people always, in, in Africa, they said, oh, go to school, I mean, come out. And, but I don't see any profession that pays more mm. than YouTube. So, for instance, if you put your video out on YouTube exactly. and you have about... Um, like 10,000 people okay. watching. Mm -hmm. So smart. How yeah. much are you likely to make? Okay, I know where you're going to. Okay. Um, YouTube <laughs> is not about views, yeah? Yeah. It's about location. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where are people watching you from? Mm. Oh, okay. If I have 10,000 views and people are watching me from Ghana, mm -hmm. I don't make money. Ooh. Mm. So how I, do you yeah? make the money so then? So most of my audience are in the diaspora. Yeah. I don't have people from, like I have people watching me from Ghana, but majority of my people that mm -hmm. watch me mm -hmm. don't live in Africa. There are people who have missed home and they want to see what's going on in Africa. Yeah. Mm. So all of them are abroad. When you have 10,000 views coming from abroad, mm -hmm. you earn more than somebody who is in Ghana watching your video. But mm. why? That is like advertisement don't pay in Ghana. You okay. know, in the US, okay. they pay dollars. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. okay. In UK, they pay pounds. Mm -hmm. In Ghana, they pay cities. That's a big deal. Value is different. Exactly. So that's how it works. So um, wow. it all depends on your audience. So yeah. I can't really tell, like, okay, okay. this number of views, how much you're going to pay you. Mm. Right. Yeah. But averagely, in a month, in a how, month, how, how many uh, like videos are you putting up and how much money are you looking at? Wow. So videos, we can go for like um, 10 to 15 videos. A month? In a month. Yeah, 10 to because I have a, a whole team, you okay. know, yeah. so 10 to 15 videos. And then with the amount, we'll mm. talk about that later. Okay. So if you want to be influential, mm -hmm. you know, how often do you have to post? You see, YouTube is also about consistency. Okay. And uh, I always tell people that you do a 9 to 5 job, right? Uh -huh. You go to work from 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Yeah. Mm. So as a an influencer, I have to create content every day. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I see each day as someone who has a hundred subscribers. Okay. Okay. You know, okay. sometimes mm -hmm. when you let the fame get into you, you forget yourself. Yeah. yeah. And that is to get my through. secret. I, mm. When you see me in town, you see me, I'm just doing the same thing that I do all the time, yeah. you know. So um, I'll tell people that be consistent. If you can even create from one to 30 days, do it. Because mm. anytime we do one to 30 days, mm. which means um, we want to hit a particular target right it's before you land in a country at least yeah. you, you know where you're going exactly but do you know what you're going to do there do you have an idea what kind of content you are looking to catch up on to feed your audience right now uh, we have like companies sponsoring us in terms mm. of uh, for me to go to any country like recently i worked mm. with mtn south sudan mm. they did everything for me mm. i just got there and then started working right. that one we know what we're doing mm. but if i go to a country by myself we get there and then we look around what kind of content are my audience going to appreciate. Mm. And that's what we create because we want to celebrate African excellence. Right. So any African who is doing something magnificent on the mm. continent, that can inspire many people. We look at you and we'll be like, you know what, mm. can you share your story with us? Right. So these are the kind of content that mm. we create. So let's, sometimes we just go there and make it happen. You've been to almost everywhere on this continent. Yeah. And the kind of audience you reach out to, yeah. I mean, 
first of all, let me find out. I mean, which one has been your biggest interview so far? That if that is, if you have one, hmm. and how much of an influence you think that interview has had on your audience? Okay, so for um, my biggest interview I've ever done was the one I interviewed the former president, mm. Jay Kufour. Yeah. I think it reached out a lot of people. Mm. I mean, mm. even if I walk in town, people see me and say, oh, you interview my dad. People take me to a restaurant to eat because I oh, interview wow. myself. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> and, but um, when it comes to the entrepreneurship episodes that mm. I've been filming, there's a guy who uses Kufis to um, set up one of the biggest charcoal factory in Ghana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that yeah. video yeah. alone, I mean, inspired a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. And then now, right now, a lot of people are coming to Ghana to also start something because mm. all of us thought that, okay, being in school is everything. Yeah. But these guys are just starting their own businesses and all of that. And I mm. believe that we need to teach people that entrepreneurship is the key. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. even being a YouTuber, being able to invest in Real estate, mm. yeah. farming, yeah. and all of that. Yeah. So, right. So, have you had the chance to do stuff officially? You know, with government of Ghana. I, I believe that what we're doing is putting Ghana on the map, yeah. and the country must appreciate. Mm -hmm. But they don't mm. care. So, recently, we uh, I did a fundraising of ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars mm. for a man who is building a, a, a park. The park was a refuse dump, and the man converted into. But someone like that, the tourism board needs to support. Yeah. Right. I went there personally, donated the man $10,000, and then it was so funny that we saw um, people from the tourism board over there saying that, oh, the park is done. I'm going to bring people to come and explore here. Oh, but this after, after the person did it on <laughs> after his The day own. I was doing the donation, after the guy doing everything. Mm. The tourism board just sent somebody to go in there. Fact, now they're even an authority. They're yeah. even bigger. You they, know, they, 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 they want that to check if the park is done and mm -hmm. they're going to bring people. Oh my goodness. I was there and I'm like, yeah. how do you guys see things? It's, it's not cool at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. it's another thing for another what day. What can we do? You know, what can the nation do we to just take need advantage to, we, of people like We just like need to you. get the right people in position. Mm. You know, we need to have people who have passion for the country. People who are in position in the country don't care. Mm. They don't. They don't care because go to Kumasi, go to um, what do you call it, um, Lake Busuntree. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness, it, it's yeah. just there. Nothing. No one is doing anything over yeah. there. This can boost tourism in the country. Exactly. And I feel like do these guys even know the worth of Lake Busuntree? Mm. Nothing is happening. Mm. So, which means people who have roles don't have passion for tourism. They mm. just there maybe exactly. because of their yeah. political affiliation. <laughs> well. We're going to take a break here. When we come back, we we'll continue the conversation with Woody Meyer. I mean, he's been there, he's seen it all. And so he brings a different perspective to this conversation of boosting tourism in Ghana and, of course, across the continent. This is the Upside Down Show brought to you by Vodafone. Together, we can. We'll be right back. This is Fact Finder from the BBC. We live in a world where news travels fast, and sometimes it's hard to differentiate fact from fiction. Fact Finder brings fact checking from the newsroom up close so you can separate truth from chaff. Be empowered to tell what's fake from what's real. Watch Fact Finder by the BBC on City TV every Wednesday at 6 pm. City TV, it's your world. Welcome back. This is the Upside Down Show on a City TV. We're having an interesting conversation uh, with one man uh, whom, uh, through his eyes, you can travel the rest of the African continent and, of course, other parts of the world. Woody Maya. My brother. It's, it's, I mean, it's been a great conversation so far, Thank but it, we're going to go deeper into it. Mm -hmm. Before the break, we were looking at... Um, state influence and of course sponsorship endorsements exactly. and all that i want to ask you officially have you been approached by any of the political parties in the country to perhaps propagate an agenda for them using your influence on youtube um i would say that not yet mm -hmm. but um Sometimes mm -hmm. I don't know if what you understand that. that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, not yet, uh -huh. but sometimes, you know. Uh, so what? Officially or unofficially? I mean, we, 
unofficially, but at some point it was official. Mm. Mm. But you know, um, I'm not here for the money. Mm. And, um, I'm here for an impact right. because when you make an impact, that's when the income comes in. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we're telling the dashboard to come back home to help mm. build Ghana, and yeah. um, it's something that I have passion for. It I've been doing it. I mean, yeah. over and over again, and it's happening. I'm meeting people that are coming to Ghana because of my videos. Mm -hmm. So recently, we I, I think uh, we were approached by one of the, um, I mean, promotional <laughs> centers in the country. <laughs> of course, I have the platform, so yeah. I had to go and then give them the platform to mm -hmm. do whatever they want to do. I was at the event, and everybody was coming to me, mm -hmm. and I felt like, you know what, it feels good. I mean, knowing that you are doing your own thing in your own way, at the same time, you are making an impact, awesome. know, which was beautiful. So, mm, awesome. so, so, awesome. so now almost a million subscribers yeah. and um, doing this over and over again. Where do you hope to take this, let's say, in the next year, in the next two years? Mm. I think I'll be on YouTube for five more years okay. uh, because I have, um, I've been to 21 African countries and the goal is to travel every African country. Okay. Um, and also we're going to the Caribbean, um, Jamaica, Barbados in mm. September. We're trying to bridge the gap between Africans globally. So um, in five years time, I think we're going to set up our own um, TV channel where uh, people are going to report positive news about Africa mm. in their various countries. So we, mm. we, we're building it. We're building it already. We have people like everywhere I go, I create a YouTube channel for people mm. for them to start making money. So whenever we start our own thing, there'll be our reporters in various countries. And I'll just sit back and watch. <laughs> CEO so, level. Okay. So, 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 so one day, one day when Woody, I don't know how old you are now, but you are Ghana baby. You know? Yeah, no, yeah, no, Ghana no, baby. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, so one day when Woody is like, say, 50, 60 years old, mm. what would you want to be remembered for? Mm. The village boy who single handed changing the narratives of the continent Africa. Mm. It's happening. I, I'm seeing Africans uniting just because of my videos. Africans getting to know each other just because of my videos. And yeah. um, that is the only thing I want to achieve. And um, I, when I'm done, I'm out. Right. But having traveled all these countries, you've mm. done 21 African countries yeah. already. How, how does it change your perspective on issues, especially with tourism? Because that's like basically your forte. That's where you're pushing. We always say this is Africa. Mm. But I'll tell you that some African countries are way ahead of all this. Mm. And I believe that some African countries can learn from other African countries, right. but it's not happening. Mm. You understand? I, I went to Namibia, and let me tell you something. They got the best roads in Africa. Mm. But let me tell you where they got their road concept from? Mm -hmm. From Ghana. Oh, can you tell real? me that you got the wow. best roads in Africa? <laughs> no, no. They, they got the concept. I, I met the Minister of Roads. Mm -hmm. I uh -huh. interviewed the, mini, uh, the CEO and of what Tor did he say? They, they told me they got their concept from Ghana. What is the concept? I don't know the concept of growth in See, Ghana. See, the concept of building the best roads, uh -huh. they got the best roads in the entire continent of Africa. Uh -huh. But they got the, the concept of the building, idea. the ideas, everything from Ghana. So how come we are not there? I then ask the people in power. Ask the people in power. I was shocked. You know, when they asked me, uh, they told me that, I know you're from Ghana, yeah? Uh -huh. I'm going to tell you something. Yeah, in my country, because they're coming to tell us about um, we got the best shows and mm -hmm. all of that, but we got everything from your country. Uh, how I'm did sure that you, make you, you feel? Exactly. How did you I feel? shed tears, bro. <laughs> well, <laughs> because I was like, yeah. we go back. Back. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Well, so moving around mm. the 21 countries in mm. Africa, what do you think Ghana needs to be doing? I mean, because we always talk about Ghana. We want to see Ghana you know, up there, mm. what do we have to be doing? What are some of the positives that you think we should also be looking at? I think if you're a Ghanaian, you need to be proud of yourself. Mm. You know why? Because of Kwame Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everywhere I go to, people respect me a lot, thinking that my country is on top of the world, okay. mm. just because I'm coming from Ghana. Mm. But when you go to a country like Kenya, you see the development, and you come back to Ghana, and you don't see that happening. I, I met a man who asked me, oh, did you come here with Ghana Airways? I came here with Ethiopian Airlines. <laughs> and, and, and he's like, you don't have airlines? I'm like, no. But so come Kuma had an airline. I'm like, ah, no, no. Currently, no, yeah. no, we don't have. The, the man was so disappointed. You know, I, I just felt like Ghana has the name. But mm. when you come here, 
there's nothing. The only thing we have is peace. And we've been talking about peace, peace, it's peace. peace. Yeah. These days. Hey, okay. That one is another <laughs> first another story for another day. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we have peace, but I feel like Ghana can do better. The country is 60 over 60 years mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. and things need to pick up. We need to improve. We need to improve. I mean, there's so many things that are wrong in a country, mm -hmm. man. Yeah. I don't I don't want to go too much into details, yeah. but I, I believe that Ghana and Ghanaians deserve better. Mm. You can't compare Tanzania to Ghana. But but let's look at, you know, <laughs> it is the human beings who make up the country. Mm. Yeah. Okay? Mm. So when you go to, so for instance, you mentioned when we went to Rwanda, yeah. somebody's yeah. job is to be cleaning the, the gutter, gutter five, five times. times a day. So even when the place was not dirty, mm. the gentleman was there making sure that I'm doing my job. Mm. What should Ghanaians, the human yeah. beings in this country, <laughs> what do we have to See, do? See, I mean, the system needs to be fixed. And when the system is fixed, it's fixed the mindset of the people. But the system but is run by the humans. Uh, the, no, the we are all citizens, right? Mm. Uh -huh. But if you go to Rwanda, uh -huh. the system is working uh -huh. because the leader set up what? The system for us to follow. Mm. Look at a Ghanaian man in the United States. Uh -huh. Take him to the United States. Uh -huh. They will tell him that when he sees a rubbish, he should put it in what? A in, a, in a bin. Will he put it on the floor? No. When he comes to Ghana, he put it on the floor uh -huh. because the system is not built. Okay. That's why I don't I don't agree with people who are saying that we should fix our mindset. The leaders are the, also citizens, yes. right? And we all know that this is not right. Mm -hmm. yeah, but you're telling me that you grew up with it. Mm -hmm. When you are growing, you know that when you want to eat food, you have to wash your hands. Yes. So mm. it's the same thing. Coming up from there, knowing that, okay, I didn't know. That was why I was doing the wrong mm -hmm. thing. But now I'm grown. I know that when you put rubbish here, you're going to fall sick. Yeah. All of us had education. Mm -hmm. So you cannot tell me that when you get the power, you're still going to repeat what you used to do. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be changed. Mm -hmm. exactly. You understand? And who changes it? When you get up there, set up a system mm -hmm. that will affect all of us. And that is what Rwanda did. Mm -hmm. You can't put a rubbish on, on the floor in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. You'll be arrested. So yeah. when it's something like this exists, no one dares to do that. Mm -hmm. you, you understand? So I believe that it's the citizens that makes goes up to the leadership. Mm. Yeah. So when you get there, you guys should put your heads together. We want to build Ghana. Must we it not want start from the citizens? Because we are also putting the people no, there. And see, I, always, hold on, I always ask myself that if you have a neighbor, you understand, uh -huh. that you know that, okay, this is my neighbor. I know that this person lives his life like this. So, but because of what probably I would also get, because this is my neighbor, <laughs> your brother's day. Exactly. Like you yeah. mentioned, it's yeah. about whom you know. <laughs> exactly. So, Although I know this person might not be able to do the work mm -hmm. because I am connected and mm -hmm. I might also get something from it, yeah. I will force and put the person there. Yeah. And then a the person gets there and we are all doomed. So I don't know, it's a chicken and Charity you begins know, out. Know, <laughs> you understand? So the citizens, uh -huh. we are the ones putting people there. Mm -hmm. How exactly. do we all come together to fix stuff, to change the system? You see, I don't know if you really understand what I'm trying to say. I do. But you being a citizen, yeah. you will try your best. Uh -huh. By doing what? I mean, you clean your surroundings. Uh -huh. But are we doing that? That's what, exactly. what I'm asking. That, that, that's what I'm saying. Uh -huh. we, we, we are not doing that. Yeah. But the system is also not checking on us. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, so, well, so it's so 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 an issue of <laughs> attitudes <laughs> and, and, and systems. Yeah. 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 The system yeah. is not checking on us. Mm -hmm. Because I think that if the <laughs> leader sitting there also has the right attitude, mm -hmm. He will face exactly. that. If, we, if, yeah. if we had people beyond the president, mm. definitely they'll be checking they'll be on checking him. The president, and yeah. it, it follows. It's mm. it's system by system. Right. But here, no one is checking anybody. So <laughs> it's everyone. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's go check. Let, let's go check YouTube, and then let's pick your your advice for a first timer, somebody okay. that wants to yeah. start a mm. YouTube channel, yeah. and probably hopes to get where you have gotten to. On YouTube, don't start the YouTube with wrong intentions. That mm. oh, you had there are more money on YouTube, so you want to start a YouTube channel. Mm. Start YouTube because you have passion for it, mm. and uh, when you start it, stay authentic, mm. be you. And the most important thing is be creative. Right. And if you have been creative, make sure you stay patient because mm. patience is always the key. Mm. I mean, some of us when we started, no one was watching us. I used mm. to get ten views, and out of the ten views, I watched nine of them. <laughs> you understand? So yeah. it, it was just 
patience, mm. persistence that got me to where I am. So mm. don't be discouraged when you yeah. start. Know that you're doing the right thing mm. and then learn from other people right. and then add it to yours and make it happen. Right. When you look back, are there any regrets? And then, <laughs> I mean, the current system that you're running, mm. are there any challenges with it that you have some recommendations or suggestions for, to fix for, it. for regret, I would say that why I didn't start this earlier mm -hmm. and then why I also did not stay consistent because I didn't know. And um, for, what again, um, is that something? The challenges The challenges is that, yeah. I mean, traveling in Africa is always um, very difficult. Mm. I mean, being arrested, being, I've been deported from an African country. Um, I've been denied What, entry. you shot somewhere you were not supposed to shoot? Yeah, I was just holding a camera and they told me that I'm a spy and then they put me <laughs> in a dark room and all of that. Mm. Uh, so I've been deported in two. Were you tortured? Almost, but the wow. funny thing is that the guy who was supposed to interrogate me was a fan. He switched on the lights and he saw my face and he was like, oh. what am I? And then he just <laughs> told me that you guys don't know me. It just yeah, let me go. um, got out of the room. So Which wow. country was this? That was Uganda. Okay. Wow. Uganda, Museveni's wow. country. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, so many countries. Well, Museveni's I mean, country, you, you would <laughs> understand. You would yes. Yeah, I mean, Museveni's Museveni's country. we don't want nobody spying yeah. on us from nowhere. <laughs> exactly. And um, I mean, apart from that, Mm. It's really a fun job, man. But like, do, you get, do you contact the embassy there or the Ghanaian cons consulate uh, there? That is something that I've never done before. Mm. Uh, but I mean, I think I, when I went to Namibia, people were telling me that I need to start doing that. Yeah. But sometimes I feel like working with people, it's, it slows down yeah. uh, whatever you want to do. I mm. mean, trying to work with the government, everything slows down and all yeah. of that. I, I love my country. I love what I do. I love the continent of Africa. And I'm willing to push forward to get this to the next level. I mean, maybe someday I hope um, the government will understand our worth and then invite us, talk to us. How do we face the tourism mm. sector in the country? Yeah. So for now, I'm just doing my own thing in my own way. All right. So, so who are you, before we go, who are you dying to interview and where are you dying to visit? His Excellency Nanado Dankwa. Because I got... Um, you want to check him, eh? Oh, nah. <laughs> it's going to be a friendly interview. I've actually sent my request already. Uh -huh. um, so he's telling me that I should wait for a while. So oh, I'm just, really? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just waiting yeah. for it. I mean, what, what, what would be the first question you ask Nanado if you get him? Hey! Nanado, that, 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 I, I, I use Nanado. <laughs> Well, I am Nanado. I am not an Ando. I am Nanado. You know, um, I, I'm just gonna. It's gonna be a friendly interview uh, because we, we got an invitation from the Gambian president, mm. and I don't want to disrespect my my president. I want to meet my president, mm. have a one-on-one -on -one chit chat with him, and then uh, from there we will take it to the next level. But can I give you a message for him? Feel free. <laughs> Ask him that. Why is the system not working? Hey! <laughs> Nana, you heard it yourself. <laughs> Nana, wow! I wasn't asking uh, yeah, because, because I think that there are a lot of yeah. things. We all love Ghana, you know. Yeah, exactly. And I think that if we all put our mm. hands on deck, mm. we can build yeah. definitely, Ghana. You understand? Definitely. But they have the power. Definitely. They have what it takes yeah. to yeah. make things happen. So... We should all get one, involved. I mean, we should, we should all get, get involved. involved. And yeah. they should give us the right attitude. They should let yeah. us believe in yeah. them. You know. And where, where, which country do you want to visit? Are you desperately um, waiting to go and see? Um, for now, I think Congo. Mm. Okay, why? Um, DR Congo. DRC Congo. Mm. It's a francophone country. Uh -huh. Congo has been through a lot. Um, in terms of war, I, I love going to war zone countries because I'm just. Because you're stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> I just came back from Somalia. Okay. It, was, it was very scary, though. Of yeah. course. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to go to Congo mm. to go find out what is going on in Congo and also share that message to the world. You speak mm. French? No, yet. But you're learning it. I, I I'll start my class very soon. Okay. I, that's one of the reasons why I didn't go back. The thing is, like, when you don't go to such countries. I have subscribers all over the mm -hmm, continent, yeah. so people start giving you pressure. But exactly. I feel like I have more Congolese fans right now, mm. so it's time for me to visit them. So awesome. that's why I'm going there just to see what's going on there. Awesome. Then. All right, so thank you very, very much, Woody, for coming. We are so proud of you, and thank I you. really yeah. believe that Ghana would very soon, you know, tap into what we are doing thank and. You put Ghana out yeah. there for the whole world to see the amazing things that we are also doing here and the beautiful country that we have.